Hello. In this video, I demonstrate how to carry out a binary logistic regression that incorporates an interaction term using Andrew Hayes' process macro, version 3.3, which was released in February of 2019. Included is a discussion of how to generate simple effects tests and how to plot out predicted logits and predicted probabilities as a function of a predictor, with those relationships being moderated by a third variable. So a link for the data and this PowerPoint will be made available underneath the video description and additionally a running document containing links to other videos on logistic regression and using other programs will be made available as well. So if you like the video and the materials please be sure to like the video um, in quotes and share it with others and also please consider subscribing to receive information on new statistics videos that I upload. So let's look at an SPSS example. So in this demonstration, we will be modeling predictors of individuals expressed intention to donate to a political cause as a function of self-reported gender identification, political interest, dogmatism, and external political efficacy. So the dependent variable is intention to donate, which is coded zero for do not intend to donate, one for intend to donate. Uh, gender identification is a binary independent variable coded zero for identified male, uh, one for identified female, and then political interest, dogmatism, and external political efficacy are treated as continuous predictor variables. So mainly what we're going to be interested in is testing whether the interaction between political interest and external political efficacy predict the probability of expressed intention to donate. So here I've opened up SPSS with the data. So we have our dependent variable donate, gender ID, uh, which again is coded 0 and 1, political interest, dogmatism, and external political efficacy. So to run the analysis using process, first make sure that you've installed the macro. But once you've installed it, then what you will find it underneath the regression menu. So down here, I'm just going to go down to process version 3.3 by Andrew Hayes. Click on that. And next, uh, note that the model number should be set for 1. So I'm going to move donate to the y variable box, and I'm going to move the political interest to the x variable box. That's technically going to be my focal predictor. And then I'm going to move the moderator, which is external political efficacy, to the moderator variable w box. And then I'm going to move gender ID and dogmatism over to the covariates box. And because gender ID is already a binary variable, it's already dummy coded, um, then there's not really any kind of recoding or anything that I, I need to do. So I'm just going to leave this in as is. It'll be fine. So next we're going to click on options. And when this box comes up, I have several things that I want to uh, note. First, uh, I can click on this button right here to generate code for visualizing interactions. Uh, next, let me note that if you want to mean center your predictor variables, you can do that by clicking on this box right here. I'm actually not going to do it for this particular demonstration, but I'm letting you know that that is available. And then last, I'm going to look at um, probing the interactions uh, conditioning on the uh, moderator at negative one standard deviation, the mean, and plus one standard deviation of the moderator variable. So next, I'll click on continue. And then on OK. And so when I do this, uh, it takes a couple of seconds, but now we have our output. And as I scroll down, you can see that up here it says coding a binary Y for logistic regression analysis. So um, in other words, what's happening is, is that uh, process is recognizing the dependent variable, which is the donate variable, as a binary variable and so invoking uh, logistic regression. So you'll see then that under the model summary right here we've got the negative 2 log likelihood. Um, right here we've got essentially the results from the log from the likelihood ratio chi-square test comparing the full model against a null model or an intercept only model. You can see it's statistically significant indicating that uh, the model containing our predictors is a significant improvement in fit over a null model. We have McFadden's, Cox and Snell, and Nagel-Kirke's pseudo R-squares that are given as well. Um, looking at our model and the predictors, we have our coefficients right here, standard errors, uh, z-values, p-values, and so forth. So you'll notice looking at it, um, and we're going to mainly focus in on the interaction, uh, this is the interaction term right here. There's the coefficient, standard error, z-value, and you can see that the interaction is statistically significant. 
Okay, so if we scroll down, you'll see also that we have the simple effects test. So you can see right here, this is uh, the effect um, column right here is giving the relationship between political interest and um, the uh, uh, probability or, or the uh, likelihood of in, intending to donate or expressing intention to donate. These are the regression coefficients right here. So all of them are positive, which uh, generally speaking uh, is, is indicating that uh, individuals who are higher in political uh, interest were expressing a greater intention to donate. Now of those um, of those effects, which are basically tested at negative one standard deviation, the mean, and plus one standard deviation on the external political efficacy variable, you'll notice that um, that those simple slopes are significant at the mean and plus one standard deviation on external political efficacy, but um, that relationship is not significant at negative one standard deviation on external political efficacy. So then we can scroll down and you'll see that we have uh, a code that is generated for plotting out um, our interaction effects. So I'm going to actually uh, double click on this and I can copy all of this and then we can paste it into a new syntax file. So I'm going to go to File, New and then open up syntax right here and paste this in. And so when I uh, highlight all of this and click the green button uh, you'll notice a couple of things. First off, you'll notice that we get a couple of graphs uh, right here. So the, the second one is a graph of the relationship between political interest and um, the probability of um, the target group membership, which is ex expressing the intention to donate. So you can see right here the lines are kind of curved, and that's because uh, the relationship between the independent variable and um, our, our probabilities is nonlinear, so it's inherently nonlinear. And actually, this one right here is kind of where that should be right there. So, um, at any rate, when we scroll up uh, right here, we have uh, the relationship between political interest and the logits associated with our target group membership. And so in this case, you can see that these are reflecting linear relationships. So you can see the green dots right here. Um, there's you know there's that there's the reds right here and then we have the blues right here. Unfortunately, um, you, it's a little difficult to get these lines uh, directly in these graphs right here. So what we can do though is if you open up uh, uh, SPSS and kind of look for uh, a, new, a new data set that's essentially been created from our syntax, you'll notice here we have political interest, external political efficacy. So we have essentially another option for plotting out um, our logits and predicted probabilities. So let's do this. We're going to go under graphs, go to legacy dialogues, and then go down to line right here. Next we'll click on multiple and then define. And at this point we'll move the, um, uh, we'll start off with the um, the logits or the log odds, we're going to move donate, actually we're going to click on other statistic, move donate over to the variable box right here and then we will move political interest to the category axis box and external political efficacy or moderator to the defined lines box. Click on OK and so now we have our uh, plot of the relationship between political interest and the logits for um, our target group membership. We can do the same thing with respect to the probabilities. So we're just going to go back to scatter dot right here. Oh, excuse me, not scatter dot. Um, we're going to go back uh, under graphs to uh, line graph and stick with multiple right here, define. And essentially, instead of using uh, our donate, we're going to move probability over right here. And then we'll click on OK. And there you go. Now, although Model 1 allows you to test a single interaction effect and to probe that interaction by plotting the simple slopes and testing them for statistical significance the way that we just did, you may be wondering what you can do if you have multiple interaction terms in the same model. So the way that you can do this is to create the other interaction terms manually in SPSS using the compute function and to include them as covariates in the model. So for this particular demonstration, uh, I created an interaction term for dogmatism by external political efficacy, and I can include this in the model as a covariate. So let's go ahead and do this. 
So here's dogmatism, external political efficacy, and our SPSS file. So I'm going to go to transform compute variable right here, and I can just type in, I'm just going to type in dog uh, x um, epe for the interaction term. Under numeric expression, I will just take dog and multiply by epe. And again, you can do centering and everything before you do this, but I'm, I'm not doing that in this particular case. So I'll click on OK, and it appears right here. So when I run my analysis, going back through uh, process, I would just include this interaction term as another covariate. And so I'll click on OK and we'll take a quick look at uh, our output. And um, kind of scrolling down to the uh, model right here, you'll notice uh, this is the interaction term that again was created by process and then this is the one that we created manually. So that concludes this video. Again, if you find the video and the materials helpful, please like the video and share it with others. And uh, once again, please consider, consider subscribing to receive that new information on uh, statistics videos that I put, uh, that I upload. Thanks again.